Our speakers today are Adam Rohn, Partner Alliances Manager Council with HashiCorp, Samir Singh and Thomas Joniak, both technical mar marketing engineers with Cisco Security. They'll be talking about the challenges faced in application deployment in dynamic and scalable environments and how the network infrastructure automation approach helps day two operations on Cisco secure, secure firewall. Please feel free to reach out directly to the speakers for any follow-up questions as well. And now let's get started. Over to you, Thomas. Thank you, Karen. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and present to you. Um, as Karen mentioned, this is network security automation using Cisco Secure Firewall and console. So let's get started. Um, why are we here today? So, and why the partnership? Well, kind of everybody thinks firewalls are kind of going away, right? Uh, we remember just kind of going back. I'm a little bit older guy, um, you know, working in data centers, working in the basements and closets um, on physical devices. Well, the future has a little bit changed. And the future is everything's going to the cloud. We have introduced at Cisco new public cloud uh, from Google, Oracle, AWS, all the way to private cloud, including Nutanix, VMware, KVM, and OpenStack. And with this, we wanted to help with all the new different challenges that are arise. Some of these new different challenges are no longer where you used to be, you know, cabling everything and dropping boxes and so on. These challenges are in the cloud. How do we connect everything? How do we manage everything? How do we put everything and create, you know, diminish all these complexities? So this is why we started this new partnership with HashiCorp. And this is why I think this is one of the greatest things that I've ever been part of in a little while, because, well, it kind of took me back to my kid days when I started, you know, doing little script kitties and, you know, coding and everything and, and kind of all the exciting stuff when you were younger. Um, I started learning Terraform a while back and this kind of have evolved into a new, new dimension for me. So why is this kind of a, an exciting news? Well, multi-cloud era is here to stay. The one number, this is a study that was done last year with HashiCorp. And the one number that I always kind of find in this very interesting is skill shortage. You can see a lot of engineers having AWS or basically having Azure or Google kind of experience. Having somebody in a full multi-cloud is very challenging, which creates more complexities, right? You have a firewall in Azure, you have a firewall in AWS. How do you manage the same policies? But then also, how do you update all the new workloads? So as a workload gets spin up, right? Your DevOps come in and they say, hey, listen, we need to spin up brand new workloads. We need to spin up all these new exciting things that we're going to be doing. How do we manage policies? How do we change everything that's going to be dynamic? Cloud isn't what it used to be where you open up a ticket and you had somebody go down to the basement, rewire the cable and say, okay, port 44 is now live, right? This is kind of everything is instant. Everything is very, very fast. The one interesting number also, digital transformation at 34%. People are already adopting it. And the other one, 76, you know, already have multi-cloud. So this is why we decided to create this module for console that's going to help everything. The other numbers that I like on this is not just the skills, step, you know, skill and staff issues, it's the insufficient tooling. And this is where we looked at console and say, hey, this is something that is going to help. If we have a Cisco secure firewall in AWS and our customers also need to spin up and DevOps calls and, and say, hey, listen, we have brand new workloads. How do we put everything and manage together? We wanted to create, and this is where the toolings come in. This is part of this session. This webinar is here to show you that these tools are being developed and these tools are being provided. So what is very interesting is I wanted to do something very kind of unique here. I'm introducing Slido here. Uh, please take your phone, scan the QR code. What we're gonna do is I wanna do a little survey. Um, go ahead and just, if you scan this, it's gonna take you to a website. I'm gonna kind of flip over right now to a browser. So just give me one second. And we're gonna bring this up, exactly. As you guys are already responding, I wanna see exactly how many people are using automation. Um, this is just something to see if people that are on this webinar are something that is interesting, that are doing it, maybe thinking about it. So we'll give everybody, I'll give you guys two to three minutes here and we'll see you know, where this thing, where the results come in.
Yeah, ramping up, very nice. So very good. Nobody really has not yet or maybe. I mean, but you know, this is exactly it's for anybody that's a beginning. So this is really exciting. I'll keep this posted. We'll give it a minute here or so. Let's see if there's anybody. How do we get started? Nope. Very nice. Now, while you guys are still doing this, I'm gonna kind of just mention. So as I mentioned, this, this entire webinar is to kind of showcase the new tools, the new things that we're doing, but why are we doing this? So let me get you back to the presentation. Give me one second. And let's continue here. So what's the new reality in Firewall? So as Karen mentioned, my name is Tomasz Jonik. I am part of the security business group at Cisco. Um, I am on the NetSec team working on the FTD, FMC, the firewalls. And as I kind of started this out, the new reality is this is what firewalls used to be. Kind of when I was in mid-20s and everything starting out, you had your corporate network and you had the public internet. Very simple, right? Well, the complexities were different back then. But the new reality has changed. It is no longer this. It is all of this. We now need to be able to secure the entire corporate network, and it doesn't belong at a physical location anymore. A lot had to do with COVID. We found out through studies that it wasn't just always COVID. But we also found out that all of these new complexities created something else. So Gardner did this study, and they found out that 99% of firewall breaches now are just caused by firewall misconfiguration. Well, I came from a partner site. I worked for almost over 15 years on, from partners all over US. Right now I'm in Krakow working at Cisco. And I can tell you the biggest challenge I see a lot of times is teams working together. SecOps, DevOps, NetOps, kind of say, hey, you know, who's gonna be pushing all these buttons? Who's gonna be deploying all this code? How do we get everything as soon as new things are spin up? How do we update everything? So this is why this webinar is here. Now, before we get into the demo by Samir, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this over to now Adam, who's gonna go ahead and take us over through the introduction from HashiCorp. Adam, over to you. Thank you, Tomas. It's my privilege to be here with you today. Uh, just like Tomas said, uh, we live in a multi-cloud world now. It's a complicated, enmeshed, difficult thing to navigate sometimes. Now, the, the why partner is, is a crucial question. Uh, there are a few foundations that console does really, really well, but console was not designed to be a firewall in the network. It was not, it was not designed to sit at the edge of the network and protect things. It was not designed to load balance. Console has <clears throat> a few things it does really, really well. It is a leader in the service networking industry, and we'll get to uh, that a little bit later. Um, but where partnerships like this really come in handy, uh, next slide, please. Uh, console acts as a, acts as a conductor in this quote unquote orchestra, this, this unified workflow, this streamlined process of, of integrations. Console can help conduct this, and we'll discuss how it does that in just a few minutes. But like I said, console does a few things really, really well. It can't do everything. So where console needs other tooling, there's there's a lack of automation tooling for you, our, our joint, our hopefully joint customers, that helps fill the gap once partnered with like, Cisco Secure Firewall and Cisco FMZ and things along those lines. It, console needs these other instru instruments in order to play the symphony. Next slide, please. So console, like, like I said, it, it has a few, it has <clears throat> some, some strengths that it really leverages out there in the industry. Those are 
service discovery and health monitoring. It provides a catalog of services and microservices in the infrastructure that really paints a, a live living picture of what's going on in the infrastructure. It also provides server mesh for certain deployments and certain workflows. And as Tomas mentioned earlier, we, we have workflows deployed all across clouds, on-prem, hybrid deployments, things of that nature. Console can span it all. That is one of the great things about console is it can be deployed anywhere. Recently, it went uh, GA with uh, its own API gateway. While still limited in features, it now has the functionality of providing north-south traffic control into and out of the mesh. Uh, so what services can be exposed or not exposed, et cetera. Finally, and where console really shines and where it shines partner with uh, a, a company like Cisco and Cisco Secure is network infrastructure automation. It leverages its own service catalog, service registry to create a streamlined workflow that eliminates a lot of the pain points that Tomas kind of alluded to with traditional net ops and sysadmin teams and, and workflows, challenges of that nature. Next slide, please. So this, this is the challenge. When a new app needs to be exposed and ready for consumption, whether by end users or other applications, whatever the need may be, immediately we see this kind of, well, we used to see, this is the traditional challenge. Several tickets are opened, have several teams that, that work for or around application developers that have to be involved. And we see a delay simply from the fact that this many teams and that many tickets have to be addressed. And immediately we see a delay simply from the fact that so many approvals have to go through, so many teams have to touch the equipment or push the configuration through. We see a big delay. This can take from hours if we're, you know, hopefully in a in a really streamlined environment to weeks sometimes and really large and complicated infrastructures. So we really see the workflow slow down and get bogged down. And what if someone was out that day? And what if someone made a mistake in the configuration? I used to live in this world in the network admin world and I used to be one of those bumps in the road sometimes and it can be a pain point, absolutely. So next slide, please. What console seeks to address is providing a live picture of what's going on in the network. And it leverages uh, one of its sister products, Terraform, and one of its modules, Console Terraform Sync, next slide, please, to actually facilitate this and streamline that workflow. So, like I said, utilizing a, a Terraform module called Console Terraform Sync, it carries out in a pub sub relationship with console service catalog, think of console Terraform Sync as the watcher watching the watchers. So console is watching your services in your infrastructure. Are they healthy? Where are they? Communicating IP addresses, things of that. It's abstracting that all into a simple unified infrastructure, or excuse me, service catalog. What as those services change as needs develop over time and applications need to change, we need to scale out or accomplish a canary deployment, whatever the case may be, those changes are communicated through console Terraform Sync, pushed to a Terraform provider, which then actually goes out and changes the network devices, the network infrastructure to reflect those changes that console saw with the services themselves. Next slide, please. Immediately, we see three benefits to this kind of workflow. All of us, we know that increasingly as, as attacks become more sophisticated and change in nature, everyone is striving towards a zero trust networking architecture. So immediately from this kind of streamlined workflow, console with console Terraform Sync, and then a powerful edge and, and even interior protection device devices such as Cisco secure firewalls, immediately we have these three benefits. We can block attackers from breaking in. We can cease 
data exfiltration from our networks. And we can also prevent lateral propagation throughout our network, whether that's malware or changing of the information itself or application dynamics, whatever that, may, that case may be. So immediately we see the benefit of what this kind of system of orchestration, so to speak, provides a network infrastructure. And with that, I'll pass it over to Samir, who's going to demonstrate how this actually works. Thank you, Adam. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen. No, not you, Samir. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Adam, for giving that overview on what Council is and the different capabilities that it supports. Now, let's take a look on how we can integrate Council with Cisco Secure Firewall. Now, uh, with the introduction and the increased adoption of cloud and microservices, we have seen an increase in the uh, sh shift towards dynamic infrastructure. We are seeing that instances are being brought up and they are being decommissioned based on requirements. And that's very frequent. Now that has made the uh, job of the SecOps quite difficult because keeping track of the instances that are being brought up or decommissioned uh, are very frequent. And as a result of that, it might result in the access policy becoming ineffective because if the IP address of my destination interface changes, it makes my rule ineffective. And as a result of that, my uh, in, whole environment would not be secure. So to solve that, we have tried to make use of console and console Terraform sync to integrate with Cisco Secure Firewall to make our environment more secure. How, it, how we are doing it is we are making use of the information that console service catalog receives from the environment that it's monitoring and making use of Concept Terraform Sync to pass on that information to the Terraform module that we have created for our Cisco Secure Firewall. Now let's take a look at each of the pieces uh, in uh, their individuality. So the first thing that we use is dynamic object, which is an object on FMC, which is a list of IP addresses. Now, the unique part of it is that it gets updated immediately and gets deployed onto the firewall directly. So we don't, uh, the user does not have to uh, manually deploy that change whenever that's made on the FMC to the FTD, but it gets deployed automatically. And the, that ensures that every change that is there in real time gets updated on the device in real time. So we have the FMC provider that we have already created for uh, HashiCorp Terraform and up uploaded onto their registry and the specific module, which is the dynamic object module, which is created for this specific task to update the dynamic object as and when the IP addresses that are updated on uh, any public or private cloud environment based on the changes as per the requirement. The other part of this entire infrastructure is the HashiCorp console, which uh, Adam just gave you a brief about, is the service mesh solution. So it keeps monitoring the, uh, the specific service that we have uh, interest in. So whether it be, let's say, a well, web app service or an application service. So it keeps monitoring that service and whenever there is a change in it, and by change, we mean that 
there's an addition of an instance or a decommission of an instance, whether uh, an instance stops working or there is any kind of anomaly that is detected, everything gets registered on console. And console server keeps track of that. And as you can see in this uh, slide animation, as and when the instance gets created, that information is updated onto the console server. So if you have an, a new instance created, it gets added. If you have an instance decommissioned or stops working, it gets removed from the console server. Now, the console server has all of this information. To relay the, all of that information to FMC uh, is provided through console telecom sync. So all of the information from console is provided or forwarded to console telecom sync. Console telecom sync in return triggers the dynamic object telecom module, which is part of the FMC telecom provider that is part of the Hajikov telecom registry. And that in turn updates the Cisco Secure Firewall Management Center that there is a change in this particular dynamic object which is being monitored. And that IP address gets updated on FMC and in turn gets updated onto the Cisco Secure Firewall which is managing and securing your environment. So as you can see the policy, wherever your dynamic object is uh, added, will get updated in real time as and when there is a change in the IP address based on the instance getting created or the instance being decommissioned. Now let's take a look at a brief demo. So in order to achieve this, the first thing that we do is create a, the dynamic object on FMC. So we provide a name to it, which is a mapping to the uh, name of the service that is being monitored we apply that particular dynamic object to the Cisco Secure Firewall so that it is being used in securing the environment. Now, this is the console server. And here we can see that the, the web service is being monitored. And currently, there is one instance that is being monitored. Now, this is the config file for the console telecom sync, wherein we define the task in the task, we provide the particular telecom provider that we want to use. We provide the app that we want to uh, app or the service that we want to monitor, and it it keeps a track of that. Whenever there is change in it, whenever there's a new instance added or there's a new instance deleted. It keeps track of it in real time and updates the telecom in and which in turn updates the FMC. So as you can see that since there was one instance on the console telecom sync, we can see that one IP address is added onto the dynamic object and it matches with the instance IP address. Now, suppose there are two instances added. Suppose a new instance needed to be added to the same service. So the same would be added and there would be no change required, but automatically on SMC, we would see that the second IP address automatically gets added onto that particular web uh, service, which is being monitored. So this is a brief a demo of how this particular care from providers uh, with the specific module that is conjunction with our Cisco Secure Firewall to make use of the instance and the device as effective as possible. Now I hand it back. Thank you, Samir. So let me share my screen here. Okay, 
So thank you very much for that demo, Samir. And just as a note, side note, Samir did develop that module all by himself. Um, and again, this is kind of the reason for my next slide and for the question. This is the beginning of what we wanted to do, right? We want to make it so that um, you can take your entire network um, and as you have console set up, as you have FMC spin up here and then workloads edit, um, delete it, um, basically your dynamic objects will automatically update. Now that's in a cloud environment. That's something that when we spoke to customers, this is one of the first needs and biggest use cases that they wanted, right? Because you don't live in a traditional kind of networks. These workloads are being spun up and spun down all the time. So the next slide oh, that I want is what features and use cases uh, from you guys that you see that might be as a, now this is a work cloud. So please scan the QR code uh, if you see this and just type it in. I'll give everybody about two minutes here uh, again. And if you have a feature or a use case, or if you wanna say, contact me or call me afterwards, that's not a problem. Uh, if you have a use case that you like to talk to us about, uh, something you know for a module for that you like to see more being developed, we can definitely go ahead and talk about that and see exactly. The reason that I brought this up that was very important is that this is in the right now, we are working on a partnership because we decided that this is something that our customers want. And so was, with Samir and I, we wanted to see exactly how to push this needle. How do we get this partnership working and involved into something more? Dynamic configuration. We'll give a people a few more minutes here to see if there's more responses. Oh, sorry, my mouse is flipping. Sorry, I'm checking the questions. Net policies. Uh, that seems to be always the big one whenever I do talk to people and customers. And we can talk about these during Q&A here in a few minutes. I'm going to flip over back to the presentation. Now, before we take it on to the key takeaways, right? What is that we wanted to kind of achieve through this? So automation is the future. One thing, like I said, I work in, in, in the NetTech team at Cisco. And I, when I joined the team, one of the components was how, do we, how can we automate firewalls into the future? How can we do it? Um, as somebody rolled down net, right, um, APIs, how can we streamline it? The one thing, um, like I said, I work for partners. I've been deploying firewalls like since PIX, so kind of rolled there. But um, one thing that I can tell you is, you know, human error. Um, if you've worked on ASA, you know, the biggest favorite friend there was you took the configuration, copy and paste it into a text file, and you pasted it as many times as you wanted. Uh, changing the IP addresses and kind of hoping everything was working, right? So if you shipped them out to a few customers, uh, pre-configured, uh, that was it. In cloud environments, it doesn't work that way, right? So how can we do that? How can we automate this into a cloud? Take that old school technology uh, kind of idea and put it in. So automation in the sense that is kind of where everything is leaning. Multi-cloud connections, right? Um, I saw a few questions here and there, but Multi-cloud connection, it's how do we connect all these clouds together? How do we connect, put all of this into and have the same kind of tools available across different clouds? So this is kind of why I like Terraform, right? Every single cloud has a different way to manage. AWS has its own, Azure has its own, Google Cloud has its own, but I like Terraform. And I fell uh, kind of like from the beginning, fell, like, fell in love with Terraform is because it creates a simple language across all the different clouds. And bringing Terraform into console and managing all of these templates, that is one way 
that for me was a nice way to understand and help the customers scale up and help customers ramp up their firewalls needs as they deploy different cloud resources. And then eliminate complexity from security. So having console and dynamic object changes what Samir just demoed, it's very simple, right? As your workloads change, security doesn't have to be involved every single time. So as Adam mentioned, it, you don't have to open, create those bumps in the wire or bumps in the road where the tickets have to be opened up. It is all automated. Console will monitor your workloads. As the changes happen, dynamic objects will update the firewall policies without raising the question to security. Okay, hey, do we need to open up for this new web or this new IP address? How do we process this? So again, it speeds up, it processes and complexity is gonna be less, right? So you have decreased the amount of people you have to talk to. Because as we know, the more people you talk to, communication gets lost all the time. So these are the key takeaways I kind of wanted to follow up through. Um, there is resources available. Um, We've listed a few of these. As Karen mentioned in the beginning, this will be available for everybody afterwards. Um, so these links will be live. This is from a PowerPoint, but we do have links and resources available. Um, you can reach anyone from this, comment on this. We'll have a Q&A here in a few minutes. So if you do have any use cases that you'd like to discuss, more than welcome to talk about those. At this time, I'd like to thank you guys for everybody for this. And I'm gonna hand this over back to Karen so we can get started on the Q&A. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. We have had a few questions come in. Um, just wanted to address um, Sandeep's question again. He asked about HubSpoke technologies and Samir responded, yes, it would work in HubSpoke topologies as it has no dependency on the topology or design, just in case anyone was wondering about that background of that question. Um, another question that came in, and I think that this might be for you, Thomas. Um, is there an extra licensing cost involved? No. So the that is actually, from Cisco point of view, there is no extra. Right now, this is uh, developed. It's open source from us. Um, the module was added, and we put it into registry. So anybody that has a Cisco Secure Ready firewall in any of the clouds and has console, um, there is no additional. You can already update your dynamic objects. Feel free to use it. Great, thank you, Tomas. And we've just had a question come in from Marios, Marios um, and I believe it's for Samir. As of now, dynamic objects are not included in access policies resource module. Will you add this feature? Yes, uh, we are working on it currently and very soon we'll update the specific module with that particular feature. So you will be able to add dynamic objects as well. So, uh, it's just uh, by uh, in, a, in a month or so, you would have that particular update where you would be able to do that. Thank you, Samir. Um, just another question, and how will Cisco continue to maintain or support this module? Who would like to take that? I think that, is that you, Thomas? Um, so I'll kind of get started and probably hand it over to Samir, but okay. um, as of right now, yeah, uh, Samir wrote this initial module. Um, it, we are constantly working and updating these modules, and that was the kind of the question of what other modules and what would you like to see as, as the next step? Um, when we first reached out, dynamic objects were the use case that was the most popular needed, um, and that was our first initial into this, um, but we definitely wanted to create more modules. We want to create more templates. Uh, Samir, um, if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, just to add to that. Um, so yeah, we are continuously working on getting customer feedback onto the kind of uh, features that they're looking on uh, to add to their environment. And based on that, they're looking at updating the Terraform modules also that we are creating uh, that we could make use console for as our source of information. So we are continuous, continuously working on that. Yep. Thanks, Mr. Messenger. Thanks, Samir. Um, and how can we get started? Well, uh, from Cisco, uh, just go to the registry and download. Um, it is very simple. If you need help from us, please uh, reach out to us. Um, but if uh, just if you go to registry, the links are available. You can definitely download the module. Um, then from there, it's just following through and getting console, getting all the multi-clouds and putting all the Terraform modules together. But 
relatively, I can tell you it is a lot easier than uh, taking a firewall and trying to put it up on a third shelf yourself, so. Thanks, Thomas. We now have a few Consul Terraform Sync questions. Um, I believe these are for Adam. Where is Consul Terraform Sync state stored? Yeah, great question. Thank you, Karen. Um, it's recommended that Consul be used as a backend for Consul Terraform Sync. And as such, state will be persisted in a Consul KV store. Um, there are a couple of different options. You can store state locally wherever CTS, uh, the daemon is running, but it can also be stored remotely and that's usually better for team environments. Thanks, and we have another question. Where can I run console Terraform Sync? It's recommended right now in console's current architecture to run it alongside any of your console client agents. Uh, as console moves more towards an agentless architecture, it will be recommended that you run CTS alongside console servers, but for now, along console agents. And I believe this is our final question. Can I use any Terraform module with console Terraform Sync? Yeah, great question. Uh, so the first step in, in getting this ball rolling, besides having a Cisco Secure Firewall, is to develop a Terraform provider. There's already a lot out there. There's a lot of great Cisco Terraform providers, um, but essentially it requires a Terraform provider be already developed. So in this case for Cisco Secure Firewalls, FMC, that sort of thing. And then any, anyone can develop a, a, a console Terraform Sync module for a Terraform provider. Thanks, Adam. I think that was the last of our questions. So thank you, Adam. Thank you, Tomas and Samir. Thank you to the audience. I hope everyone enjoyed today's webinar and has a better understanding of network security automation using Cisco Secure Firewall. And finally, as mentioned at the beginning, this webinar was recorded.